Hello, so in light of the fact that transfer admissions are soon, I would just like to put out a video about my upper division experience at UCSB. Um, and pretty much all the upper division bio classes I've encountered are pretty much like this. I'll go into depth about the cert certain biochemistry or certain upper division classes that I felt like were of note to me. Um, but in general for UCSB, every single upper division bio class I had, I've taken, I've needed to study a lot on my own. It wasn't just enough to like go to lecture um, listen to professor, take notes, take really good notes, and then just cram like a couple days before. I have not been able to do that for any single upper division bio class. I mean, the, the amount of material that they present to you and the complexity of material, because this is upper division bio, um, is a lot more complex than just, you know, being able to, being able to cram the night before. You really have to study pretty much every day. Um, when I was doing upper division bio, I studied pretty much every day since the day one. I utilize Anki, which is a flashcard um, software, and I utilize it pretty much every day, and this lets me do space retention. Um, but anything that will let you study every day, that's something that you're gonna need to do when you're doing an upper division bio course at UCSB. Um, as well as the fact that we're on the quarter system, um, so it's pretty fast paced. Um, it, it's pretty much, you know, you get a midterm week three and the midterm week six, and then you have a final, and it's 10 weeks, and um, you really gotta just nail it down the moment they teach it to you. Um, it's not exactly as forgiving. I mean, there's sections and everything, and there's office hours, but a lot of the studying is gonna have to be from yourself. You have to really just go home and learn the material. And um, it might be a transition. Um, I was never a transfer myself, but I've heard from a lot of my transfer friends that it, it's different um, than CC. Um, all, all, all I've known was university and um, all I've known is that when I came to university, when I didn't do the, when I didn't study every day, it hit me like a train truck. Like I couldn't, I couldn't like, I couldn't get good grades. But after I started studying every day, I was able to get good grades. Um, another thing is that you have to utilize the office hours for upper division bio because some of the material that they present is like, it's really complex. Like, uh, like I didn't think biology could get this complex, but you really have to go to their office hours and really hammer down on everything that you don't know. And the good thing about it is I've had more than one occasion these professors like give hints for the test on literally their office hours. So that's why I've always gone to all the office hours, even if I felt like I didn't need to. Um, partially because, you know, obviously getting to your professor can let you get letter or recs and everything, but also because they sometimes drop hints on what they're going to test on. So, you know, it, it's, it's beneficial for you to go to their office hours, even if you don't want to go to their office hours, because you never know who you're going to need a letter of rec, or you never know that one point on the test will get you an A with the curve, you know. Um, and for upper division bio specifically, the biggest choice that you're going to make, um, I think, when it comes to upper division bio is whether you want to go down the route of general bio, bio, BA, BS, or, you know, the... Um, the uh the the more complicated bio route which is pretty much the decision between 10 uh mcdb 108a and the 110 series um i'm not sure if transfers get to choose um but if there is a choice to be made or if you ever feel like in the middle that you want to actually just take the 108 or 110 series um the 108 series is a much harder biochemistry series um it encompasses three quarters and it's a very in-depth look into bio biochemistry. While the 110 series is just like a precursor, very, very light survey of biochemistry. It teaches everything in the 108 series, but just in a quarter. So obviously it's a lot more, you know, less in depth. Um, I mean, the 108 series will let you learn more, but the 110 series will give you an easier A. Um, that's pretty much the simplest way to put it. Um, Yes, learning biochemistry in depth will probably help you if you, if you for say, like, want to do well on, like, MCAT or whatever. Um, but a lot of the stuff you can learn at home, I, I personally think it's a lot more beneficial just to take the 110 series and just focus, well, if for if you're a pre-med, you know, just focus on getting the A. But if you really want to learn, you know, biochemistry in depth and let's say you're going on to grad school or something, the 108 series would be much more beneficial for you. And finally, rate my professor was absolutely crucial um, for upper division bio. You never know what professor you can get, but definitely use Rate My Professor every single time. I mean, I mean, this thing is just amazing, right? Uh, you get to see 
the tips and everything about the professor and um, just before you choose any upper division bio course here at UCSB, use Rate My Professor. It, you, you will not regret your decision to use it. Um, and now, so I'm just gonna go into the courses I took my junior year. Um, so 108A, um, this was about proteins, DNA, and biochemical methods. It was a very conceptual course. There was a lot of emphasis on content and um, pretty much the text, the textbook was very crucial for this course. I found that the, uh, hold up here, let me have my notes ready. I found that the the Stryer textbook, um, I don't know if it's still used, but the Stryer textbook along with the study guide as well as molecular bio of the cell, along with its study guide is very, very helpful. And the, 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 the textbook and the study guide are like two separate things, um, but buy them both or rent them both um, because doing all the problems in that, in, in molecular bio cell especially was like what I think helped me get get the get the A in this course and pretty much I made flashcards in my reading and I read the textbook um, before every lecture so I knew what they were lecturing on right before they even lectured on it so the, the lecture was just to supplement my knowledge and pretty much I had to pretty much memorize everything in the textbook for this class um, it's a it's a really like it's a really encompassing class just on you know DNA proteins and especially the biochemical methods section, which is the hardest part of this class um, because it's testing you on how to do research pretty much. I and mean, if you've never done research in a research lab, like an academic or an industrial research lab, it's kind of hard because you get introduced to like SDS page and like um, Northern blots, Southern blots, and just all these kind of like biochemical techniques that are pretty hard to pick up on if you've never done it before. Um, so the only thing you can really do really is either join a lab early when you're at UCSB and you can do that um, through F FRAP, F F R A P. Google it. Um, it's pretty much like a program they use to introduce like um, students to professors or cold emailing professors. Um, but I talk more about that in my um, pharmacology, my UCSB pre med experience video. If you want to go look at that. Um, but uh, the other other way is pretty much just to read a textbook and do as many problems as possible because the problems will really solidify. Um, your problem solving ability uh, for for this this section, and I remember the final for this course was like pretty much it was three hours, and this was the longest time I took for a final. I took I felt like I was writing a straight up essay for this thing. Um, I finished the final in two hours, and I spent the other hour triple checking everything. Um, it was a hard course. It was a lot of material, um, but it's doable, you know, as long as you do what I did. And now we have 108B, which is metabolism. So here we're going to go into the citric acid cycle and glycolysis and metabolic pathways. I thought this was like a really cool, cool course. Um, it was a very conceptual course and it dealt a lot with a lot of bodily pathways and how they interact with each other, which is pretty high yield for the MCAT um, in case you are going to take it. Um, and the professor who teaches it, he um, is very thorough at teaching it. And so you don't really need to read the textbook for this one. Just listen to him and take notes on everything that he says. Like, I'm serious. Like, everything that he says, take notes on everything. Because anything that he could say could be on the final or midterm. You do the, You also have to just, like, do the problem sets that he releases as well as the practice midterms. And I thought the practice midterms modeled his actual test pretty well. Um, but this is not a course that you can fall behind on. Um, there are a lot of pathways and the pathways build upon one another and the pathways are like huge. Like they're they're like very intricate and they all relate to each other as you can expect because your body, you know, is in a state of homeostasis. So, you know, you don't want to fall, fall behind on this kind of course. Um, and there is a little bit of OCHEM in this course. It's just very basic, um, very basic electron pushing. It's nothing, nothing that's really hard. Um, but there is, there is um, some, okay in this course um so but don't be afraid he shows you all the mechanisms it's not really that bad um uh i was also able to do really i got an a plus on 108a and also an a plus on 108b so you know as long as you do the practice problems every single day and you go to his office hours he's a really helpful professor um yeah he's a really helpful professor and tas are also pretty helpful too um but go to his office hours yeah, i don't think you'll regret going to his office hours and then 108C, this was a special kind of course. Um, this course dealt with systems biology. So we actually learned how to code in MATLAB here. And it's a, it's kind of a biology I didn't really expect to take. I don't really think it really was biochemistry, 
um, because what we what we did in this class was we just pretty much used programming and math to model biology. So like we're trying to model like um, like uh, pretty much like for example evolution or something or like uh, model um, the mutation rate of HIV or some some stuff like that. Um, and this course used a lot of statistics and also some calculus too. And there were programming assignments that were due every single week, as well as a midterm in the final that had programming as well. And it was a special course. I mean, you pretty much learn MATLAB in 10 weeks. Um, it's not as bad as it sounds. I had no programming knowledge and I was still able to get a, uh, an A, did I get an A or an A plus? I forgot. But I was, I was still able to get an A in this course. I did have to really, really that first week though, I had to really nail down the programming. Like I had, I programmed like insane that first week just to really learn like the basics of programming like if loops or if and statements and you know all this stuff but it's doable matlab i don't think was a really hard language to pick up that being said it was a special time of course but it's not really a course that you have to take if you're a pharmacology major it's not required and i was a farm major i just took this course because i wanted to complete the biochemistry series but this course wasn't exactly you didn't have to take this course. You could have taken another course like virology or uh, neurobiology or something, but you know, it's just the way life goes. Um, and in terms of the difficulty, I would say 108C was the most, most difficult, followed by 108A and then 108B. Um, okay, and finally, oh, not exactly finally. Now this is my junior year summer. Um, this is when I took human physiology, MCDB 111. Um, and I took this over the summer because physio is a lot to learn. And I really just wanted to get this done in six weeks. Um, and pretty much this is just physiology, right? We went over all the major organ systems in the human body, like the lungs, the heart, excretory system, kidneys, nervous system. Um, it was straight up memorization, um, but it's still pretty important, especially if you're taking the MCAT. These things show up a lot on the MCAT. And when I took it, there were quizzes every single week and there were non-cumulative final, which was great because... You can learn stuff in like three weeks and you forget it, learn stuff for three weeks. I personally love taking summer courses because they're just so fast and you just finish the material so fast. And then finally, since I'm a pharmacology major, you know, I took pharmacology, which now it's been changed to a two course, two, it's, it's consists of MCDB 126 and MCDB 126B, as well as MCDB 126AL and MCDB 126BL. L at UCSB, just for future reference, stands for laboratory courses. And so, um, but when I took it, it was 126 A, B, and C. It was an entire year. So when I took 126 A, which is now 126, which is now 126, which is a combination of 126 A and 126 C, it's what you expect of pharmacology. It's a lot of drugs covering lots of body systems. We learned stuff like anesthetics, opioids, antipsychotics, blood pressure medication. Um, it was a lot of memorization, um, but the subject matter was pretty cool to learn about especially since, you know, you sometimes eat these drugs. We learned about ibuprofen and acetaminophen and how they work in our body. Um, but this is when I really, really started to use a lot of Anki. Um, there are many YouTube videos about Anki. Search it up. It is essential for this course that you use Anki. Like Anki was insane for this course. If, without Anki, I would not have memorized all the different minutia of the drugs and everything. Anki is so insanely good for this course. Um, just, you know, you have to use it. It's just, you just have to use it. Um, in terms of the lab course for 126 AL. So in the lab course, there were, the first four weeks was experimenting with live tissue and injecting drugs and seeing what happens. So they literally like, the, the TAs cut off the tissue for you and then you have to like attach it to this like um, measure measuring thing. And that took some time. You have to learn how to like, attached tissue, you have to make sure the tissue doesn't die. And honestly, those first four weeks were pretty tough. I mean, pretty much every week we had long lab reports due, which were 20 to 25 pages long. There's a pre-lab quiz in section every Tuesday morning. And yeah, those first four weeks was really tough. Like your life pretty much revolved around run 26 AL, just going to lab, spending 9 a.m. to like 5 p.m. in the lab and coming out. And the grading was also kind of tough too because you need like a couple of lab reports to really know what your TA wants from you. Um, and you just, you even have to eat lunch in lab. And I pretty much never, I did pretty much didn't even eat. I, I would spend the whole time just doing it because you spend the whole entire time in there for the first four weeks. 
Afterwards, though, it's a lot more chill. It's like from nine to one, um, which it's a lot more chill. Um, it's but the first four weeks are just it's insane. But you get a work with live tissues, so um, that was a really cool thing. Um, okay, and so 126B. This is different from 126A. Um, there's still a lot of memorization, but there's more of the emphasis on how drugs work. So like like the G protein couple pathways. Um, and also there's a lot of molecular biology and a lot of hormonal pathways. And this one, when I took it, there was homeworks every single week. And in both the 126A and 126B, and also all of your upper division biology courses, um, you're going to be reading papers. Pretty much, you, you're going to be reading at least one paper, or a couple papers um, in every single course. So get ready just to be get really good at reading these papers because, you know, it's, that's what you're going to be doing for a lot of time. Um... 126BL. So this one introduced a lot of molecular techniques that are used. I hear in industry, I don't know, I haven't really touched industry, but you learn a lot of molecular techniques like ELISA's, SDS page, tissue handing, um, flow cytometry. Um, just uh, you learn a lot. Um, and there still is really long lab reports, um, but the labs, every single lab never took, never took me past like 1 p.m. to finish. And the good thing about the pharmacology labs, even though you will hear that they're like nine hours, you really do bond with your lab mates. Um, and you really do get really close with everyone that's in, in, in the lab. Um, and you know, I met some pretty great people just being in that lab. So um, I really do, I mean, I really do recommend pharmacology as a major. It's pretty fun. You get a, you get a lot of hands-on work and you only have to meet once a week, pretty much. While all the other labs, I think you have to meet like twice a week. This lab, you only have to meet once a week. So. I thought that was pretty good. And you still have morning pre-lab quizzes and everything. Um, and that, oh yes. Also, uh, besides the pharmacology, you will also have to take genetics. Um, I almost forgot to talk about this. Um, so genetics here, this is something you, any, any biology major has to take. Um, it's 101A and 101B. 101A is about bacterial genetics, I'm gonna be honest. 101A is a really hard course. Um, if, yeah, 101A is just, it's a pretty hard course. It's, it, I still don't really understand all of what was being talked about. It was my first upper division, but I'm just gonna say, if you go into 101A, do, do book problems and go to office hours and don't underestimate this class. This class is hard. I think, exact, I think 101A actually was harder than all of the upper division courses that I took. MCDB 101A, it's harder than every single, every single upper division class that I took. Um, don't underestimate this course. This course was really hard for me. Um, but 101B on the other hand is Mendelian genetics. So like Punnett squares and recombination frequencies and some biochemical methods too. This course was a lot more fun. Um, I really like this course. Uh, it's much easier 101A. You still have to do a lot of practice problems. I recommend it taking over the summer because it's only six weeks versus 10 weeks. Um, I took it over the summer. I had a really good experience with it. The professor who teaches it his name is Christofferson. He's a really good professor. Um, I really enjoy taking a class, this class with him. And especially like Mendelian genetics and everything, it's pretty commonly tested. Well, the genetics just in general, if you take 101A and 101B, you'll be really set for genetics on the MCAT. So I used to be really scared about genetics, but after taking these courses, you know, they weren't exactly that bad after all. Um, and yeah, that was pretty much um, my upper division experience uh, at UCSB. Um, I did, I, I, I really enjoyed my upper division experience at UCSB, I think. Um, it really did ta teach, teach me a lot about biology. And so whether you're, you know, looking to come here, um, or, you know, you're just browsing through and seeing what's up with UCSB, um, hope you enjoyed watching.